Good morning all. Let's continue with module 4, I.O. devices. In the previous session, we have seen about the introduction to module 4 and uh, the need for I.O. interfacing. Now, we are going to discuss about I.O. addressing. This can also be uh, seen as how we can connect to I.O. devices, how we can establish a connection uh, between processor and I.O. devices. It is through an I.O. address. So that will be discussed in I.O. addressing. First let us see what is an I.O. address. It is also known as port address. Each I.O. device connected to your computer is mapped to a unique I.O. address. So every uh, device that is connected to our computer will have a unique address that is known as I.O. address. These addresses are assigned to every I.O. port on your computer including USB, Ethernet, VGA, DVI ports etc. So these are external devices that we can connect with the computer that is uh, through this I.O. ports. Having a unique address assigned to each port allows your computer to easily recognize and locate devices attached to your computer. Whether it is a keyboard, mouse, monitor, printer or any other device, the computer can locate it by its address. Because I.O. addresses are controlled by the computer's motherboard, they do not use up any system memory or RAM. So these are controlled by computer's motherboard, they are already uh, programmed what should be uh, the address of each uh, port that are connected to the computer. So uh, it is not using the system's memory or RAM. We can do I.O. addressing in two ways. First one is by means of a separate I.O. address space that is using specific I.O. instructions. This is also known as isolated I.O. addressing. And the second method is by means of memory mapped I.O. or uh, it is using general purpose operand manipulation instructions. So this is known as memory mapped I.O. addressing. So these are the two ways that we can do this I.O. addressing. And uh, uh, as we have discussed about uh, this, uh, that is we have separate I.O. bus. Uh, or we have, we are using the same system bus for connecting I.O. devices. Uh, we can uh, have different lines like data bus, address bus and control bus. And we will see what is the difference between these two types of addressing in detail in the coming slides. First, let's see what is an isolated I.O. Isolated I.O. have common bus, data and address. So we have a common bus for memory as well as for I.O. Um, in terms of data bus and address bus. Uh, and, but separate read and write control lines for I.O. and memory. So uh, we are sharing the address bus and data bus with memory and I.O. But the control bus is separate for memory and I.O. devices. Here in this figure you can see uh, there are two lines uh, from memory control line to memory and there are two lines to I.O. Uh, is represented in this figure. It represents one memory read and memory write and the control lines uh, for I.O. denotes I.O. read and I.O. write. So that is represented in the speaker. So we have a separate control line for memory and I.O. That is known as isolated I.O. So when CPU decode instruction, then if data is for I.O., then it places the address on the address line and set I.O. read or write control line on due to which data transfer occurs between CPU and I.O. 
So based on that control signal, it decides whether it is a I.O. read or whether it is a memory read or whether it is a I.O. write or memory write. As the address space of memory and I.O. is isolated and the name is so. Here we have different read write instruction for both I.O. and memory. So next one is memory mapped I.O. In this case, every bus in common due to which the same set of instructions work for memory and I.O. So we have a shared bus that is shared between memory and input output devices. Hence we manipulate I.O. same as memory. Both have same address space due to which addressing capability of memory become less because some part is occupied by the I.O. So it is shared between these devices. So now uh, let's see some differences between isolated I.O. and memory mapped I.O. Isolated I.O. we have memory and I.O. have separate address space. But in memory mapped, both have same address space. All addresses can be used by the memory in the case of isolated I.O. Due to addition of I.O. addressable memory become less for memory in the case of memory mapped I.O. Separate instruction control read and write operation in I.O. and memory. Same instructions can control both I.O. and memory in memory mapped I.O. In this I.O. address are called ports. Normally, in the case of isolated I.O., the I.O. addresses are called ports. Normal memory addresses are used for both the cases, for both memory and I.O. devices. And isolated I.O. provide more efficiency due to separate buses. And the memory mapped I.O. provide lesser efficiency and isolated I.O. is larger in size due to more buses but the memory mapped I.O. will have small size and isolated I.O. is complex due to separate logic that is used to control both but uh, memory mapped I.O. is having simpler logic that is used as I.O. is also treated as memory only. I have given you a small task to identify these input output devices or uh, both uh, the type. Uh, I hope you could identify at least two uh, to three devices uh, because we all are used to some of the devices that is represented here. We will check some of these in the next slide. Hope you can identify some of the um, input devices here. We have a keyboard, we have an optical pin or we can say light pin uh, and we have scanner, barcode reader and joystick um, and many more. Uh, in the previous figure you may see the robotic arm uh, and um, some of the input devices like mouse etc. And uh, output devices, you can see some headphones or headset here. And we have a screen or monitor. And we have different types of printers including laser printer and inject printer, etc. And uh, we have speakers um, and we have floaters. Floater is uh, similar to printer, but we will see what is the difference between printer and floater. Uh, while we are studying about output devices. And some of the devices can be used um, as input as well as output devices. There are um, devices like digital camera, pen drive, touch screen um, or touch pad, uh, then webcam, fax machine, modem, CD or DVD, etc. can act as both input and output devices. Uh, but due to se se ha having several 
features uh, this may vary because some of the devices provide both the facilities so these are all regarding the uh, initial uh, discussion about io devices let now let's see uh, let's discuss about uh, the uh, each category of io devices um, first we will see what are the input devices and uh, in the next um, topic we will see what are the output devices uh, i already told you there are there are no points uh, to understand you can um, remember some points uh, to under each and every topic so you may feel dry so uh, i am not uh, insisting you to study these points only you can search for uh, another points uh, you can mention uh, some valid points inside each and every uh, topic in this particular module so um, i am not uh, compelling you to study uh, the points i am giving um, as this material but uh, you can um, further read or you can further search in the internet you can find many um, points regarding each and every device and if you feel it is interesting you can um, point out that uh, um, in your notebook and you can write that in um, that when a question arises uh, in that particular topic <clears throat> 